So what is going to drive value is bringing computation onto the platform. That's it. It's an AWS credit. That's it. Mm -hmm. AWS credit, you know, just like you can go buy some credits to send some compute to AWS, it's a credit to use compute on the network. So our goal is to bring as much compute onto the network. You know, a single enterprise could basically send more like transactions than the entire Ethereum network. Like one, you solve like a massive big case, big use case, you could get that from one customer. And that's why it's so interesting, right? You can, right. You, can you can drive so much like computation uh, and value by doing this. But you know, at the end of the day, we're just a utility, just like AWS, so. Hey, what is up guys? Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. If you are interested in Casper Network and its native token CSPR, please watch all of this one. I'm gonna pack so much information in this one, it's not even funny. And for those that are curious, I'm on day 72 of 75 hard. So 72 consecutive days of two workouts per day, reading, drinking tons of water, following a strict diet with a calorie deficit, hitting my macros. So this has been a huge challenge for me between everything I have going on, but I'm really happy I stuck through. So if anybody's interested in doing 75 hard, it is completely free. Do your own research and understand what you could be getting yourself into. Find a battle buddy, whether it's, you know, a friend or your wife to do this with to help hold yourselves accountable because it is definitely a challenge. I think the stats are 95% of people fail this on their first try and I understand why. So for anybody that mentally prepares themselves for this, because this is not a fitness challenge. This is a discipline challenge. This is an Iron Man for your mind. And if you're lacking confidence, that just comes from a lack of discipline. So as the adage goes, confidence comes from doing what you say you're going to do. So the more you can stick to your word, the more momentum you build. And I'm speaking from experience, guys. If you suffer from depression, anxiety, PTSD, this absolutely helps. And apologies for not making as many videos this week. It's just been super crazy. I have family in the ICU. My kitchen flooded, so got a new hot water heater as I shared. So good times out here in Puerto Rico. And then speaking of that, as I shared on Twitter, um, after sending a wire between banks over 40 days of the money being missing, which makes me hate banks even more, and that's why I'm a crypto maxi, they closed my account and told me over the phone that they saw that I did crypto transactions with Binance US and an OTC broker. So they said no crypto transactions are allowed whatsoever. So it's a complete banking mafia out here. I mean, really just a giant monopoly. So uh, yeah, that has been my week. But anyways, we keep moving forward, guys. I am psyched about this. So let's go over some recent news. All right, first up, so briefly touching on this because we got more information related to the largest enterprise blockchain deployment in history with IPWE. This is a Hyperledger Foundation member alongside Casper and out of any layer one blockchain and smart contract platform in the entire crypto asset class, they chose Casper Labs to do the largest enterprise blockchain deployment. They did not choose Solana. They did not choose Cardano. They did not choose Ethereum. Ask yourselves why. Some people overlook this and think this is some mom and pop shop. This is a massive organization. They are launching intellectual property, approximately seven to ten billion dollars in aggregate value initially. And that is just the start. So 25 million patents existing is dynamic NFTs. Dynamic meaning ever changing. They can adapt and evolve as the business needs change. If you need to upgrade the smart contract, you can send the deployments. If you need to update the metadata within an individual patent, you can. And this is just one small reason why I believe Casper Network will be one of the largest enterprise networks in crypto history in the future. And also a massive shout out to the X Frontier. If you old Casper, go give this guy a subscribe and watch his recent video yesterday with the CEO of Casper Labs. There was so much information in this. I tried to put together some threads as a quick summary and also added some additional information I have. So we're going to go over some of it in this video. So be sure to follow the X Frontier on Twitter. Huge thank you for this because I think he was one of the best interviewers I've seen. The questions were perfect. The flow of the interview was good and we got good, valuable information. So to go over a few things for anybody, and if you're interested in the tokenomics, we can break it down better in this video to really explain what is going on. So Casper Network is a layer one smart contract platform utilizing the original CBC specification that Ethereum had. So I've been aware of the CBC specification since they pitched it years ago, but then Casper is the first one with it actually live. So they have everything live on their network today that Ethereum wants to do in the next five years. And remember, that's ETH 3.0. Ethereum 2.0. Sorry, ETH Maxis. I like ETH. I like Bitcoin. But in my opinion, it was a failure. I have not seen substantial cost savings. I have not seen anything impressive about Ethereum 2.0. I think the future is going to be multi-chain. I think there's going to be a variety of enterprise blockchain networks that do very well. Asper and HBAR being two of them. 
So let's think critically about this and I'll try to read this slow, but I just want to speak fast because there's so much information. So if I speak too fast for you and that's annoying, you can put it on 0.5x speed. If I'm too slow, throw it on 2x. What affects the value of the network in the future of the Casper token? Utility. So the more computation done, the more transactions on said network, the higher the value of the network. So the same thing can be said about any other network, including Hedera's Hashgraph. It's a utility token. It is not a currency. It is not a security. It is not a commodity. It needs its own classification. Not using the SEC's Howey test that is 70 plus years old. So the Casper token, CSPR, does two things. It secures the network via staking and pays for computation on the platform. Now, the CEO of Casper, he is a top ETH holder, I believe, or at least what I've seen a while back, was in the top 20 of ETH holders. Let me break this down. A seed investor, and he was already a multimillionaire angel investor at the time, had a variety of good ventures. In 2010, the CEO of Casper Labs discovered Bitcoin because his roommate at the time was one of the biggest miners in the world. Bear in mind, this is 2010. There's no Coinbase. You're writing keys down on paper, so paper wallets. And he had a rack of servers, and he was 5% of hash power. So he started buying Bitcoin a little bit later, 2011, 2012. Do you know how much money you made if you bought even just a little Bitcoin, 2011, 2012, 2013? And last I saw, he was a top 20 wallet holder of Ethereum. Do you know how much money that is to be in the top 20 or even the top 50 of ETH holders? He was an early investor in Filecoin, a variety of others, and even Hedera. So I just want to emphasize that this is from a gentleman that is well-educated, I believe went to Carnegie Mellon, um, very, very smart guy. And if you've ever seen some of his old interviews, he gives the most simplistic explanation between proof of work and proof of stake. So a seed investor in ETH, top ETH holder. He said that if Casper Labs gets a single large enterprise use case, this could basically send more transactions than the entire Ethereum network. So let's put this into perspective, not just for Casper, but any enterprise blockchain use case. If you sold a big use case, you can get that from a single customer. And just like the X Frontier emphasizes, transactions on Casper are around 1,000 transactions per day. We haven't seen anything yet. And for comparison, Ethereum is averaging over 1 million per day. I'll just say this, I'm glad to be here while the tide is low. Now we know a few other things. The enterprise sales cycle is a lot slower than retail, but it's orders of magnitude larger and stickier. So once an enterprise migrates their system and starts using your network, they're likely going to stay on for years, if not a decade. So once they launch, they have some cost savings, they generate some revenue, they have no reason to leave, especially with upgradable architecture. Casper is modular, it can support this. You can drop quantum key encryption schemes, Whatever you need for quantum resistance, future-proof technology to stay compliant, it's legitimately the best technology stack in the entire crypto asset class and nobody's paying attention. So Casper Labs will be at SALT Conference. Remember the recent Skybridge Connection, a $3.5 billion fund that is backing Casper, helping them basically get in front of these Fortune 500s. The founder of Skybridge specifically said, we are going to be helping Casper get into the Fortune 2000. And last we heard, there were about 45 NDAs. And yes, there have already been a few Fortune 500s named, but there are more actually in development as well. So the founder of this $3.5 billion fund that has one of the most impressive Rolodexes in the world of finance, supply chain, enterprise adoption in the world. And he said verbatim, if Casper Labs can get 50 of the Fortune 2000, which is 2.5% of the Fortune 2000, it will become an industry standard. And what's exciting is we already know for a fact they have several. So the SALT conference is where the leaders and enterprises and governments are there to talk about the biggest issues and how to solve them. So NFT New York is cool, but that is not where you go for an enterprise blockchain project to solve real problems for governments, thought leaders, and CEOs of Fortune 500s. You go to SALT, and there's not many people that are there, let alone invited. Also, the importance of El Mascari Holdings with Skybridge partnering with Casper. And this is connected to the royal family of Abu Dhabi, the UAE. We are talking billions and billions of dollars. So their role is going to be helping Casper Network's footprint with companies there because companies in the UAE work very closely with the government today. It's not like the United States where it's a complete joke. They're very progressive and open-minded when it comes to technological adoption. So connected to their royal family, they're going to be basically the liaison, the partner, a strategic partner to help them with the governments and the companies to launch. I can't emphasize enough how big this is because there are other connections. What's the group called in uh, Dubai? SGM group. Um, just a variety of partnerships in the works. 
a reminder that Casper Labs is the infrastructure provider for enterprises and governments. We know the government of Telangana in India. We know the blockchain service network in China. There are a variety of use cases being built, and that is only what has been released. So let me emphasize this. Enterprise customers are the ones that control NDA disclosures, and this is what the CEO of Casper said during the interview. So I'm trying to give a quick synopsis of these points before going over some other stuff. Casper does not control the NDA. They cannot say, hey, we are partnered with this group. It is up to the customer that's an enterprise or government, and it's on their terms when they want to disclose that information. So for example, let's say AT&T, a huge telecom provider, had an amazing blockchain idea to generate tons of revenue and save on costs. Why would they announce publicly to their competition or on Twitter for us to even have insight into that, that they just started building a solution that's going to make them tons of money more competitive and blow their competition out of the water? It makes no sense. So then their competitor could go copy them immediately? Bad idea. First mover advantage is key in the enterprise space. Now we talked about the 25 million patents being minted in batches, so it's confirmed in batches. Still 7 to $10 billion in aggregate value that is traded and traced on the public network. And that is just initially. We're going to talk about how much money is actually there. Because per the S&P 500 value, over $30 trillion in market cap. Patents represent 30%. So we're talking about $10 trillion right there that Casper could go after. This is the first deployment, the largest in crypto history. Now the liquidity for the Casper fees for minting these patents will be coming from IPW side. Nucleus Finance is equally as large, another separate use case on Casper network. So the Actus standard is 30 years old and they're upgrading with Casper. So I tweeted this yesterday, I'm watching the world sleep on Casper network as they build. So Nucleus Finance, as we can see opening this up, NucleusFinance.com I believe, we can see Actus and this is built on Casper. We've gone over this a few times, so I'll be brief. Nucleus Finance, Casper Labs are partnered with WM Dot & Service, the central authority and data provider for the global financial market. To all the maxis out there that are only focused on ISO 222, there are other types of data standards. This use case has nothing to do with XRP. I think it's complementary. These are my two largest holdings, in tandem with HBAR and a few others. It's going after something entirely unique, so please don't get tunnel vision. Remember, most of the financial system and legacy infrastructure was built 70 years ago before the internet even existed. So ISO 222, of course, just a messaging standard. This is not settlements. XRP in the XRP ledger would be settlements. But you can name your favorite ISO coin or, you know, quant with its own standard or XGC, Algo, a variety um, are working on some type of standardization with ISO and messaging, but that is not settlements. So it's exciting to see crypto projects or companies like RippleNet be ISO compliant. That's a good thing, but let's not overhype it. We can see Actis, the separate standard. I don't see any other project working on standardizing financial contracts with upgradability because only Casper can do it. Think of the derivatives market. This is one of the largest markets in the world, 600 trillion to 1.2 quadrillion dollars in intangible value. And there are only 32 contract types that exist that can be replaced with automation leveraging smart contracts on Casper to represent the global financial system. Again, Nucleus Finance is one use case, and there's going to be more announcements about what Nucleus Finance is working on at SALT in May, remember Skybridge, presenting to the largest companies in the world. Now, the Casper Public Network will be used extensively by enterprises and governments. There are so many FUDsters that don't understand how hybrid chains work. They are connected to the public network still, and they have the safety of the private network. So, in terms of privacy, if you wanted to stay HIPAA compliant or what is it, a GDPR compliance, you cannot share certain records on the public chain. You have to keep that private for the customer, clients, or whatever it may be. So you're still gonna leverage the public network, but you don't have to put every piece of information there. So with the benefit of having a public, private, and hybrid installation, this traffic wouldn't have gone anywhere if it weren't for the installation of the hybrid network. So because the hybrid network exists on Casper, it actually benefits the public network in the Casper token. So now enterprises can stay compliant with all types of privacy and other regulations while getting all the benefits of a public chain, including liquidity, including another audit trail to basically cross-reference to your private network as well. Also, Casper 2.0, the upgrade is coming. Zoog protocol, they're going to be able to run two consensus protocols simultaneously. So that'll be coming with the gas stabilizing or gas stabilization model for predictable gas fees. So that is a major reason why IPWE is choosing Casper. So as the Casper CEO said, and their team stems from Wall Street, Google, just huge companies, said that enterprises prefer fixed costs instead of variable costs. You don't want your gas fees on the network to be 10 times higher a certain week out of nowhere, like Ethereum. 
You want the option to budget against this, especially when you are minting seven to ten billion dollars on the public network. You have to be able to forecast. So we already talked about this, but I want to go a step further. So this is the largest enterprise blockchain deployment in history. We know that companies including Nike and Toshiba will be having their intellectual property on Casper's public network. As we can see below, patents equal 30% of the S&P 500 market value. So that's about $10 trillion because the S&P 500 is roughly around $30 trillion. So I know I said this, but just to emphasize, $10 trillion. And this is unlocking the value of IP assets and everybody's going to be paying attention. And you can see, of course, $1 trillion is lost or an opportunity cost because of neglect, mismanagement, and misunderstanding in the United States alone when it comes to intellectual property and intangible assets. Remember, SWIFT by 2027 forecasts that the tokenization market will actually reach $24 trillion. And then BCG, Boston Consultancy Group, is estimating by 2030 we could have 1 billion crypto users instead of just over 400. We're going to have several billion users at some point, but it will take time. And remember that Casper is one of the few projects that supports WebAssembly, 30 million developers worldwide, whereas Ethereum, 200k developers in Solidity, give or take. So this is opening the doors to millions of devs that don't know typical smart contract programming languages. This is what's going to open the door to enterprise adoption. And the enterprise market is the largest market in the world. In the crypto asset class, we have not penetrated enterprise utility. It's what we've been talking about for years, but we have not seen anything yet. Yes, Hedera is doing some cool stuff with Atma, tracking 22 billion items and doing identification and tracking for supply chain. That's a real use case, and that is why Hedera has so many transactions. But that is just one single partner. When you have more partners, transactions can skyrocket. And some of these enterprise networks, including Hedera, even though HBAR has a larger circulating supply, Casper will not have the circulating supply of HBAR and ADA today. Keep in mind, 30.6 billion and then ADA is about 34.7 billion. So let's do the math with the 8% inflation rate again. I just did it really quick. So total supply, not even circulating supply. So this is being conservative times the 8% inflation rate of Casper as a utility token to fuel the engine of the network. So remember, ADA is approximately 34 billion. How many years from today will it take for Casper to get to that supply? Keep in mind, they have more to leak. Cardano and Hedera have more tokens that will be distributed in the future. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's gonna take about 13 years to get to HBAR. Yeah, so I mean, we can say, about 15 years until we have the supply of ADA today. And this supply will go up a little bit more. And looking at HBAR, let's just say over 10 years. But that's something I want to emphasize is if you believe HBAR can hit a dollar, then you should believe that Casper can go up to three to five bucks. But Hedera at the same time is working on some huge things. So it wouldn't surprise me if they actually get several large enterprise use cases to see a high price in the future. This has never been done before. We don't know the exact future. So we are truly on the leading edge and I'm speculating right there with you. But remember, there is $3 trillion up for grabs, if not more. I think there's a lot more value to be extracted and delivered. And even like the estimated size of artificial intelligence and machine learning, I think that's conservative. Um, with AI and ML, like you can't put a price on something that can streamline activity so much. You cannot put a price on data. Data is the true gold. Why does Elon Musk own Twitter? It's not just for fun. It is because that is where all the conversation is. They can use AI models to study our behavior. And I saw Ralph Powell actually emphasize this, so credit to him for this. Why did Twitter add long-form video? Why did they add long-form text? Elon Musk is getting more and more data about us. Data is the new gold in this generation. If you have data and you understand human behavior, you can create all types of AI models and basically predict everything in terms of our shopping tendencies, anything. So every time you see people arguing on Twitter or doing this or that or liking and retweeting, it is just studying our behavior. And for a quick comparison between the potential of AI and us, so you know how we think of an ant and its computing power, just an ant walking around on the ground. The difference between an ant to us is the difference between us to AI, if not more, but it is just exponential. We're talking thousands. So yeah, it's crazy. And also shared by IPWE recently. And remember, this is happening in the coming weeks for Casper. And actually, let me talk about the demand of the supply. So this video is going to be long, but anybody that is serious about learning about this, I hope this is valuable. 
So Porsche right here, or Porsche, we have latest market value is $8.8 .8 billion. But what's even more impressive is the valuation of their intellectual property or IP portfolio. $22 billion of IP for one company. So this is what I'm referencing when we have seven to 10 billion coming to Casper initially from several companies. Yes, he did name Nike and Toshiba. What do you think this could mean, guys? We talked about $10 trillion, give or take 30% of the S&P 500 market value could be tokenized in the future. So my prediction is after this seven to $10 billion comes to Casper on the public chain that will then be traded and traced for years to come. There's most likely much more money on the way, not seven to 10 billion. We already talked about 10 trillion. If we could get 10% of that value, that would just be astounding. And why do I think that's possible, as crazy as that sounds? Because there's no other layer one that has their own virtual machine set up like Casper with upgradability in modular architecture. You can name another enterprise blockchain and there's gonna be a drawback. Now we have the X Frontier that just came out with this. So remember, initially it's 25 million. I have yet to confirm this, but the number might be 40 million. Now, per the interview yesterday from Casper Lab CEO, he said that 25 million initially. So maybe they're bumping those numbers up because those are rookie numbers and we want 100 million patents. But yeah, so I definitely imagine how much money there really could be. So I asked the X Frontier as I was recording this video because I just paused to find out where he got this information so we can see Rekt Vojak actually shared this. So let me rewind just a couple seconds so we can get the cliff notes here. I also gave was on a panel um, and that was really significant because uh, we are uh, deploying I, and correct me you know that correct me if I'm wrong but I think the number is 40 million of their contracts and transitioning them I think for, yes uh, for IPV it's really uh, counted in millions yes. and uh, it means that it will be uh, millions of objects of NFTs that will, they, they will be uh, deployed yes. to our blockchain so it's a really really significant time uh, so I don't know if she just mixed up numbers, but we know that they said 25 million patents initially, and that's what was in their announcement. But they made it sound like yesterday that there's gonna be more on the way. So, I mean, 25 million, another 15 million, 40 million contracts or individual patents tokenized on Casper would be really cool. So they're probably starting in the next week or so and just doing like a bunch of batches throughout the year. So obviously 40 million over 25, that would be basically a 60% increase. So, 7 to 10 billion, the average is 8.5. So if we took $8.5 billion times a 60% increase, this may be completely off, but this is just me doing you know, mental gymnastics over here. Instead of 7 to 10 billion, could it be 13.6 billion coming to Casper? Makes you wonder. Um, either way, I assume that we do see tens of billions of dollars on this platform in the future regardless, and this is all on the Casper chain, the public chain. Also saw Anders share this, props to Jim Cramer. It's not too late to get out of anything created or related to crypto. He called basically the bottom right before the impulse came. And the inverse Jim Cramer trader is one of the best out there. I wanna talk about this really quick. Then we're gonna talk about the tokenomics and potential price predictions. So of course, certain alts have huge communities after that alt has been around for years and did a 50X, 100X or 1000X from the all time low. Some investors, or most of them, made money at some point. They're happy. They continue discussing it. There is more interest. There's more building. There's more volume. All things that come with a growing community and price action. Now, newer projects that have yet to experience a bull run and were launched during the peak of the market, they'll be ignored until they have price action. Price action is what catches our attention as retail investors. We humans, we're emotional. We feel safer in the herd. Um, we get excited together. Things like that. It's scary to be a contrarian. It's also the most profitable when you're positioned before the masses catch on later in a bull run. So we know HBAR, after launching, huge distribution sell-off, and pay attention to that wick, by the way, the weekly candle body. We're going to refer back to this for Casper. Huge distribution sell-off actually retraced pretty quickly, and then the bull run came. So we saw multiple impulses for the HBAR price chart, a 60x from the low. So people down here are happy, people down here are happy. Then the newcomers come to buy the hype up here and then they complain and call it a scam when they didn't understand where they came in the cycle. Cadena, same thing, wick up there, huge distribution, 90x. We know Fetch AI from the all-time low also did a 100x. Interesting, that wick at launch when it was on Binance also filled and reached that level, just like HBAR. We know Ada, Cardano also, wick, huge crash, 98% crash, just like Casper, wink wink. And we can see over a 160x, closing this wick as well. So once we broke above the weekly 50 MA, we started getting momentum. And that's why I have the 50 MA, this yellow line in each chart. So Cardano's all-time high price, we'll just say $3.09. And this is approximately on September 2nd, 2021. Its all-time high market cap on August 30th 
was $99 billion, as you can see right over there. And just to confirm its supply right there, September 2nd, right around $32 billion. So remember, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research and double check everything that's shared in this video. But we can see if Casper reached ADA's market cap of $99 billion, and ADA did this with $32 billion in circulation, Casper is at just under $11 billion in circulation. That would be roughly an $8 Casper. So that is just going off the fact if we we're looking at it to do something like ADA did in the past. So for somebody to say that Casper can't do a 10x or hit a dollar in the future, that's an absolute joke. It absolutely can. And long term with success, we better hit a few bucks. But with that being said, there is a lot to prove. Anything can happen. Remember, Alliance Block was doing well, but they suffered a hack. I know it wasn't their fault, but it definitely affected trust within the community. So anything can happen. But you can also do what Solana does and be backed by VCs, do a 500x and go down the network four times a year and still do well. So, hey, anything's possible. But I think Casper is the most legitimate enterprise layer one I have ever seen in this space. And yes, I was buying HBAR at launch and I still have a huge holding. So just emphasizing some of these guys, Algo was a lot smaller, about a 25x. If we included this a liquidity wick over five bucks, then it's a lot more. But the same point applies. You know, breaking over this 50 MA came back, somewhat of a back test, got the show on the road. So provided we stay above the weekly 50 MA, I'm pretty excited for the Casper price chart and altcoins this year, especially as Bitcoin is just starting to wake up. We have Filecoin as well, about a 50x, you can see, closing that wick, even right there. So these wicks, or weekly candle bodies, are very interesting. We have Zill also did a 100x. We can see Zillica from its all-time high all the way up. One, two, I mean, basically just a triple top at this level. And then we have our friendly ghost, born in a bear market, molded by it. And a variety of alts throughout cycles over the years, still from their all-time low, see a 5, 10, 50, 100x or more. So let's see what the future brings. And I'm calling it right now, as Casper starts going up in price, the community will FOMO in. They're going to want to buy at 15 cents and 20 cents. But the best time to actually do so was during the lows for the past one year. And overall, I'm just baffled that there's not large accounts, you know, on Twitter, these Bitcoin ETH maxis that have a million followers. They're not talking about Casper or what the enterprise space is doing for blockchain. They're talking about Bitcoin in El Salvador. They're talking about other use cases with Lightning Network that just simply can't scale. You know, I love Bitcoin. I want it to be here. I don't want it to crash to zero because that will affect the crypto asset class. But this is the largest enterprise deployment in crypto history with more on the way. Seven to ten billion dollars. And that's just one single partner. And I know for a fact there's other applications that could be even bigger. So as the CEO of Casper Lab said, Casper has the largest enterprise pipeline in the space, period. And I hold other projects in the enterprise space. Over the past five to six years, I've gone through hundreds of projects. And a lot of people don't do their own research. They don't see the computation coming to the platform and what that potentially means. They don't understand the total stake bonded. They don't understand the ratio versus the circulating supply. And nor do they understand the basic math and economics behind the inflation rate for this utility token. I've had 100x returns before. I've sold too early on others. I watched some do a 500x after selling and I have the screenshots to prove it. And this is not financial advice, this is solely my opinion. I personally will not be making that mistake with Casper over the next few years. I watched the DAG community, which was already pretty strong, but they were small at the time. When I got in and I started seeing it go up and it did a 30x, I saw the community explode. I think the Casper community is strong, but it's small right now. So I'm excited to watch a lot more acknowledge the sleeping giant. This is an infrastructure provider for Fortune 2000s and governments with real partners today. They don't need to focus on retail right now. And DeFi, decentralized finance for enterprises, is going to be massive. It is a lot more than the silly use cases of yield farming. Yes, that's fun to explore in the world of DeFi, but watch what happens when you see DeFi applications on Casper. Tokenizing mortgage agreements, loyalty programs, rewards, it's going to be so much bigger than people even imagine. These are just a few projects that are backed by some multi-billion dollar firms that I'm very interested in. And I can assure you that Casper Labs, Ripple, Hedera, they don't need me to pipe in with my two cents. I'm just excited. I'm a speculator in this market. I'm an absolute minnow. And the real winners in this space will not need somebody to market them on YouTube. And just speaking about the tech, I think you can learn more on uh, ETH.org. Upgrading and maintaining smart contracts should be simple for enterprise and government adoption. It's not today for other networks. With Ethereum, to maintain or upgrade a smart contract, you have to either do contract migrations, data separation, proxy patterns, strategy patterns, or diamond patterns. It is a hassle. It takes time. You don't want to have to keep deploying new things. An enterprise customer should be able to upgrade information like that.
And that's why it's simple with Casper because the team actually has enterprise experience. You can upgrade your contracts and specify how the state of the contract is managed. You can specify whether a contract is upgradable or immutable. Do you want it to be able to be changed with multiple signatures for security in the future or do you want it to be unchanged? You can version your contracts and deprecate old versions. You can set permissions around who can perform contract functions. Do you only want your IT department to do it? Do you need your president, VP, and CTO to all sign off on it exactly with your own version of keys for extra security? This is the future. Hybrid networks are the future for enterprise blockchain. I think Bitcoin has a place. I think Ethereum has a place. I think a lot of these do. But I'm telling you, enterprise adoption will not work unless you meet them halfway, which Casper is. Also shared looking at the Casper market cap, what was interesting, and um, we shared this previously, but just a little fun fact for anybody new, when you draw a Fibonacci retracement on the Casper market cap, high to low, you can see we're pushing up to the 702 where there is a triple top. So, so dear crypto gods, let's hope that we can blast through this and this is not in fact a triple top. But remember up here, the 4.236, around 2.4 billion. Casper at a $2.4 billion market cap, or the market cap at a 4.236, it would be exactly 22 cents, which is pretty funny because that is a 10x from the all-time low at 2.2 cents. So just looking at this chart, a 50x from the all-time low is over a dollar, a 100x is over two bucks, and remember the weekly candle body is at 60 cents. And we talked about the WASM deploys, the WebAssembly deploys for Casper when the patents are minted, and how much Casper would actually be demanded and would this move price or reduce the supply and circulation? So a normal transaction is 0.1 Casper, delegating, undelegating, 2.5. WASM deploys can vary. So this is where we can speculate. So I've done some WASM deploys where it's 2.9 Casper. I've done some that are six. And then yesterday I did some that were 55 Casper. So I'm curious because the higher that number is, the more demand there will be for the token. So if we know 25 million patents, arguably 40 million patents now, what is going to be the average Casper WASM deploy fee for those patents? So I know it looks like 40 million patents are going to be minted, but just to be conservative before I actually confirm that, we're just going to go with the 25 million patents. Now, if we did just assume that it was six Casper, and I mean, do you know how much information patents can store? So I don't know how much information they're storing. Are they putting 100 page documents on the blockchain for a patent or is it just kind of the owner audit trail? I don't know how much data is going to be in each block, which could determine the WASM fee. Let's say it's only six, which is super low. It could be 50. If it was six Casper per patent, they're going to be in batches. So I'm curious how the gas fees would work. That's 150 million tokens, 150 million Casper tokens. That is one to 2% of the entire Casper supply. Now, if it happens to be 10 Casper, remember there have been WASM deploys I've done that are 50 Casper. So it could be five times higher than this. That's 250 million tokens, two to 4% of the entire supply. But remember the circulating supply around 10.9 billion subtracted by the stake bonded that is locked up 8.7 billion. You actually get in circulation or able to be traded by exchanges 2.1, we'll say 2.2 billion tokens. So if a WASM deploy was 54 Casper, like some of mine were yesterday, that could be over 1 billion tokens needed to mint, which is over 11% of the entire Casper supply. Now, instead of looking at the total supply, let's just assume this number, the actual amount in circulation. If we did this number of tokens needed to mint, divided by the actual amounts in circulation, not bonded or locked up, that is over 60% of the entire supply. So I'm looking forward to more information as they begin minting these patents, guys. But I'm trying to brainstorm and see one single use case, which happens to be the largest deployments in history. So I'm curious what it would look like. Is it going to be 1% of the supply? Is it going to be 50% of the entire supply? Um, very curious and looking forward to the gas stabilization feature to understand what is the average Casper fee per patent. So we can calculate, so we can do our best to calculate an estimate of how much demand is needed. Because I want to show you something. Looking at Casper on CoinMarketCap, not the best aggregator for data. We can see under 8 million in total volume on a 24 hour basis. That's nothing, 7.8 mil. What do you think is gonna happen when enterprises are trading this? Or I mean, damn, even a Binance listing. Let's compare something in the top 90 next to Casper. So remember, $7.8 million, virtually no volume. Do you know what happens when there's more transactions that come to a network and more computation? The network goes up. I mean, look at this optimism 149 million compared to 7.8.
you have render look at this 88 million so like, this is just an example of projects that are basically near casper that have 10 times more volume so we went over casper virtually no volume on a daily basis if we compare render for rendering you know gpu 20 million dollars in volume from binance tether pair another 4 million with the binance busd pair we have coinbase and then once it's on binance i trade render with my bots with binance us so i mean just plenty of volume to open up the gate now a few more things so these are some charts that we've been sharing and we've been going over this since 2021 a variety of comparisons fractals fibs trend lines watching the weekly chart using the five day and watching these moving averages start to form so this is casper versus cardano I've also done analysis of Cardano's Bitcoin chart versus Casper's Bitcoin chart. Extremely similar. And there are gaps in the Casper Bitcoin chart that are higher as well that equate to a 3 or 4x if we get that volume. I have a crypto charts folder on my computer with probably thousands of different chart setups over the past few years. We're going to take a bars pattern and just play with the fractal here because I believe that Casper could be following either an XRP fractal or an ADA fractal. And then you plot the FIB as well. And I just want to point out a few things related to this. So... Um, let's pull up the official chart so using the swing high on the candle body looking at a few levels so if we did simply follow an xrp type fractal it's likely we'd come up around that double top around 20 cents so whether it's the 236 to the 382 this big old range that is high probability where an asset can go during a bull run now if we break through that level we may go higher and i'll show you that but then i'd anticipate some type of pullback back to the 0.59 fib because this is what bitcoin did in march 2020 before setting a new all-time high right after and then xrp is also around that level today so this is one setup i'm open to just ignore you know this wick because obviously this was the launch but in route to the all-time high price i feel like we have to get a basic retracement come back below the 236 if not a back test like we've seen xrp bitcoin and a variety do and then you're in position to all-time high now some of these phases can be much shorter some of them can be much longer and looking at a variety of catalysts we know minting of nfts we know nucleus finance big announcements in may but then also casper 2.0 in the upgrade and davos again for the third time at the world economic forum that will be in january so in terms of timing i'm very interested i'm going to do my best to speculate as best i can watching this when this comes to fruition but this is one scenario i see with a retracement now, if this is too conservative and boring for you, the other option I see is this. Instead of going only to the 236 to the 382, we could go up to the 786702. Now, why do I say that? Because we have an open gap, as we've shared, at 43 cents, right at the 702, 43 cents. HBAR also has one at 43 cents, coincidentally, the 702. It's almost like we live in a simulation. So instead of the retracement only coming up to 16 to 24 cents, we could go much higher to 43 at the gap. The absolute highest I see is maybe the 100% retracement with a huge bullish impulse up to the weekly candle bodies at 60 cents. The point I want to make is this. If we see any huge impulse up to 20 cents, up to 43 cents, or the weekly candle body up there at 60 cents, no offense, but I'm selling probably 75% of my entire position. The remaining will just be staked because I'm forgetting about it for a few years. And I'll be trying to buy back or DCA back in under the 236. If we go all the way back to this range, even better. So by doing that type of strategy as we break through each of these fib levels and retracements if we don't have any type of retracement peace out i'm taking some profits and just going to sit on my hands for six months set some staggered buys you can see in this case a back test to the 11.8 this is the casper fractal flipped came back up almost to the 702 is a dead cat bounce and then fell down so that is how it works so if i sold here and we saw this right there i would be a little nervous but we see fractal after fractal with a dead cat bounce or a bull trap type move and then after this, remember, Bitcoin recovered very quickly from the 5.9. This was the March 2020 bottom. XRP is just riding this right now. So an example is XRP right here. I think Casper is somewhere down here, yet to retrace up to the 3 to 50%. So XRP did this last cycle in 2021, rejected it. Where did it go? Back to the 0.59. Interesting. That's exactly what Bitcoin did before it went up to its all-time high. So that's the bullish case, 40 to 60 cents. My buddy thinks I'm wrong and he thinks we go right to a dollar. And just remember, this is just my opinion. We're going to see what happens. This has never been done before. Fractals are fun to analyze with other technical indicators, but absolutely anything can happen. I could be overestimating it. I could be underestimating it. Anything is possible. It's just super interesting to try to plot this and get the thoughts flowing. But of course, I just hope that we follow like an ADA fractal and go to a new all-time high and just rock it or do a Bitcoin fractal with the giant cup in the 2015 bear market bottom. But time will tell, guys, and utility will win long term. 
I can speculate and guess on price action here, but I personally believe that Casper is one of the most fundamentally strong projects I've ever seen. And it's ignored, and it will be ignored only for so long, of course. Um, you know, structurally, it's interesting. Um, looking on the weekly, the weekly RSI, this is the five, yeah, this is the weekly. Um, it has crossed 50, which is good, okay? So we're past the zero line. If it crosses 60, that is a lot more bullish. So if we could go all the way up to overbought, that's where you can see the crazy popping on the weekly time frame, just like we've seen a variety of assets in the past. So you can see this RSI is on the rise. It's in an uptrend. That's a good sign. And remember, some of these have already shot. Yes, their market cap is way smaller, so this is not a you know fair or comparable analysis, but I wanted an example of the RSI on the weekly time frame piercing. So, I mean, you know, Casper's right down here. So if we get that pierce and you're an overbought, no, I'm not buying it overbought. This is when I just try to sell. This is where the crazy bullish momentum can come through. We have Fetch also rocketed again. This did over wick to wick over a 10x and also the RSI overbought. So it flew. So I'm open-minded to it. Um, we'll keep tabs on some of the larger caps. If Bitcoin does in fact keep pumping, it's gonna take the altcoin market a little bit longer. But overall guys, I'm excited to be in the crypto market. Keep your head up and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like and sub. I know this was a long one. I have to go get my second workout in after editing this bad boy, but uh, much love and seriously appreciate anybody that watches this video. I know not many people care about Casper right now, but I'm doing this video because I truly believe this will be one of my personal best investments. And I'm hoping that this does very well for everybody that's here now. In the future, I want to look back on this day and just smile about making these videos and going over this asset where there's just a very small community. They're smart, but it's small. And that's what I'm about because I like being with the underdogs. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts down below. And my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description with all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.